morning. We are now on page 582. We're going to start uh, test number four. So let's start with the first problem. Problem number one. Problem number one. When Miss Yun arrived at the grocery store, there were five packages of hot dog rolls left on the shelf. One package contained 12 rolls, and each of the other packages contained eight rolls. So there's five packages. One contained 12 rolls, 12 rolls, and then the other four, four contained eight rolls, right? Because there's five total. If Miss Yun bought all five packages, how many hot dog rolls did she purchase at the store? So it's 12, 12 rolls from that one plus four times eight. Well, that's 32. So 2 plus 2 is 4, and then 44. So she bought 44 rolls, and that's choice C. The hardest part there is just the multiplication. Number 2, A, B, and C are points on a line in that order. If A, OK, let's, let's draw that. So there's my line. OK, so A, B, and C are points on a line. A, B, C. If A, B equals 30, A, B is equal to 30, and B, C is 20 more than A, B, so B, C is what? It's 20 more than this, so it's 50, right? What does A, C equal? So what does this equal? Well, it's just 30 plus 50. It's 80. And that is choice D. Next question. And I will change colors. Problem number three. If x plus three is equal to a, then what does two x plus six equal? So the, the really fast way of doing this is you say, well, you know what, two x plus six, that's the same thing as two times x plus three. Right? And what's two times x plus three? Well, x plus three is a. So this is going to equal 2 times a. And that's choice c. And that's the fast way to do it. I mean, you could have done you know, x is equal to a minus 3, and then substituted this in here and said 2 times a minus 3 plus 6. You get 2a minus 6 plus 6, and you would have gotten 2a. This would have taken you like 15 extra precious seconds on the SAT. So if you saw this immediately, this would have been a better way to do it. But this would have also been a correct way. The next question looks like the next couple of questions I'll have to do some drawing for it. Okay. So they plot a bunch of points. I I'm trying to figure out how I can draw the minimum. I don't have to draw the whole thing. So that's the y axis, x axis. Let's see, scores on test. I'm just gonna draw the points that look like so so I don't have to draw the whole thing. So you have points. A, point B here, point C, and then they have, then they have point D here, and then they have an E, which is, looks like it's the same level as the B. Point E, and so we get where we are. So this is this line right here. That's a 60, and then. They draw another line right here, and then this point right here is 80. That's 80. And then this line down here looks like roughly, let's see, it's 40. Then where the C is, looks like there's a line here. And then the C is, there's a 60 another line, and there's a 80 there. And in the book it says this is, this the x-axis is score on test 1. Score test one. And then the y axis is test two. Score on test two. I know you can't read what I wrote, but you can look at it in your book. Score on test two. So these are the test scores of five students. So problem number four asks us for which student was the change in scores from test one to test two the greatest? So which student either did really bad on test one and then improved to test two, or did really good on test one and then kind of degraded? Well, let's see. Let's look at the chart. So, B, student B scored a 40 on test. So let, let me write all the choice. Let's do actually in order. So, what was the change for A? 
And I'm, these aren't the choices. These are just actually the choices are the same as as the uh, the letters. So A got a 40 on test one, right? Got a 40 on test one. Just read it here, and got a 70 on test two. So the change is 30. B got a 40 on test one and a 60 on test two. This change is 20. C got a 60 and a 70. This is 10. D got an 80 and an 80, so it's no difference. And then E got an 80 and a 60, or minus 20. But the change is still just 20. We could write minus 20. But the biggest change is choice A. Got a 40 and then got a 70. So really improved on that second test. And number five, what was the average, the arithmetic mean of the, of the scores of the five students on test two? On test two. So the, the y-axis is test two. So let's just write them out. Uh, student A got a 70. 70. Student B got a 60. Student C got a 70. Student D got an 80. Student E got a 60 plus 60. I don't know if you can read that. And so then there are five points, right? So let's see. We could just pretend like this is a, this is a student. That's a 60. I already. So let's see. What's seven plus seven is 14 plus six is 20 plus eight is 28 plus six is 34. So it's 340 divided by five. 340 divided by 5, and that equals what? 5 goes into 360, 68. That's the average or the arithmetic mean, and that's choice C. Problem number 6. Problem number 6. OK, they drew a bunch of stuff. I guess I should draw it too. That's the line they drew. And it keeps going like that. Let's see, I have, so it goes from minus 2 to 2. So it's minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. An extra space. See, so they draw a bunch of points, which I'll do in a different color. So this is T, and they have U, V, W all here. U. V, W, U, V, W, and they put an X here, X, and Y, Z. So there's Y and there's Z. Y and then Z. They ask us, on the number line above, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z are coordinates of the indicated points. Which of the following is closest to the value of the absolute value of U, plus v. So this is just an approximation problem. So you just have to kind of look at this and guess what u and v are. So it looks like u u is about 3 fourths the way to negative 1, right? So I'm just going to assume that u is equal or approximately equal, I can do squiggly equal. u approximately equals negative 3 fourths, right? Because it's almost at negative 1. And then v looks halfway between 0 and negative 1. So that looks about negative 1 half. Right? I don't know if that's exact. Negative 1 half. So what's the absolute value of minus 3 fourths minus 1 half? Well, that's equal to the absolute value, get a common denominator, of minus 3 minus 2 over 4. Right? That equals the absolute value of minus 5 fourths. The absolute value of minus 5 fourths is equal to 5 over 4. And if we look at if we look at the choices, 5 over 4, that's a little bit more than 1, right? That's equal to 1 and 1 fourth. 1 and 1 fourth. 1 and 1 fourth, this is 1, so a little bit more than 1. Looks like choice Y is our best answer. So that is choice number D. See you in